Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your tutor, Disha. Today, I'll be concluding the CSEC Biology June 2021 Paper 2. And the first part of the question says, outline Darwin's theory of natural selection. In his theory, he postulated that more individuals are produced in each generation that can survive. He also noted that there's competition for resources between individuals of the same species that have the same means to obtain these resources. Next, he postulated that phenotypic variation exists among individuals and the variation is heritable. And lastly, there is a struggle for existence and the individual best adapted to the environment will obtain the resources, survive, reproduce and pass on their alleles to successive generations. Next question, explain why the development of antibiotic resistance by bacteria is considered to be an example of natural selection. To understand this question, let me reiterate the definition for natural selection. This is a process in which Organisms possessing certain genetic characteristics that make them better adjusted to the environment, survive, reproduce, and transmit their important traits to succeeding generations. Now, how does the development of antibiotic resistance by bacteria is an example of this process? When an antibiotic drug is introduced to a population of bacteria, those most susceptible to the antibiotic will die quickly. However, those less susceptible and can adapt to the antibiotic conditions will survive, reproduce, and pass on survivable traits like rough coats around their cells to the successive generations. So this is a prime example of natural selection. Next, a farmer wishes to use artificial selection to alter the characteristics of his crop, suggests two ways in which artificial selection will benefit the farmer. I want to remind you here of the definition of artificial selection. It is the identification of desirable traits in plants and the perpetuation of these traits in future generations. Okay, so how is this process important to farmers? Well, farmers can use this process to produce new varieties that are resistant to pests and diseases. And that will save the farmer money, right, to buy things like agrochemicals. Secondly, artificial selection allows farmers to produce new and attractive varieties in a short period of time. This is going to boost the farmer's income right, when he gets traits like this over a short period of time. A species of toad which carry a toxin was introduced on an island which was inhabited by iguanas. The iguanas ate mainly toads. Many but not all of the iguanas died when they ate the toads. Several years later, biologists examined the iguana for any changes and observed that the length of the tails of the adult iguanas increased by 10%. So just three possible reasons for the increase in tail length observed in these iguanas. All right, so the question is basically talking about natural selection. You see a species of toads um, being introduced to an island where it was populated with iguanas. So naturally the iguanas are gonna start to consume these toads, right? Some died, some were able to survive, adapt to the environment and reproduce. It is the adaptation to the environment that enabled them to develop new characteristics like an increase in tail length. The, the length of the tails increase to support their exploration of things like new food sources. Recall the iguanas lived on an island, right? So um, it could be that their tails elongated to facilitate the process of swimming. And lastly, their tails could grow longer as a mechanism to develop 
to deliver painful strikes to predators, those iguanas with tails that could successfully kill or ward off predators, could pass on their traits. Lastly, one of the biologists suggests that the iguanas with longer tails were a new species. But another biologist argued argued that species is not determined by different physical features. It was later concluded that the iguanas with longer tails were not a new species. Provide an explanation to support this conclusion. So indeed, the iguanas with longer tails were not a new species because it was just that due to selective pressures in the environment, iguanas had to find ways to adapt to the environment and thus evolve new traits. And finally, describe two situations which may lead to the evolution of a new species. Keyword there, evolution. So recall, speciation is the process by which a new species is formed. How can we have a new species being formed during evolution? Well, a new species can form when a group of individuals remain separated from the rest of a species long enough to evolve different traits. So the longer the group remains isolated from the rest of the species, the more likely it is to evolve into a new species. And then you can, you can also add how this occurs. It occurs via geographic and reproductive isolation.